So th th this first training seminar um, is the second uh, comparative perspectives we, we have after the perspective on uh, the situation in the north of Africa. And today we will talk about uh, the situation of new street groups in the south of Europe. And there we will have the presentations and uh, yeah, um, testimonies um, with their research of, from Luca Querola, um, from Eduard Ballester, Maria Oliver, Paolo Grassi and Juan Mancilla. And these uh, are the, um, the research we are um, doing in Milan, Marseille, Madrid and Barcelona. So I think this will be a very interesting um, seminar. And uh, I think we will follow the, um, the order as we agreed before. Luca, I hope this is okay with you. First, you will start with yeah, the introduction, and then Edu, if, you, if it's okay for you, you will follow with Barcelona. Okay. And please, uh, everyone, because today we have five speakers, and we hope to finish um, at uh, half past five, and then we have some time for questions, comments, etc. And I think this is also really interesting to share, to be able to share together. So please make your presentations 10 minutes. If you uh, have 12 minutes or 13, that's okay, but uh, I will remind you, okay? I will, I will keep a look at the watch and tell you, okay, now you, you must finish. Okay, that's I hope that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, again, everybody welcome. And now we will start with the introduction by, by Luca. Wait a minute so I can share his presentation with you. And this is the first one. Yeah, you yeah. can say, you see it, Luca? Yeah, I can see, everybody can see. Yes. 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 So I think yeah. I. Yes, yeah, so Okay, so I think I can start. Uh, thanks for the invitation to be here with you. It's really a pleasure to start to share uh, the provisional findings uh, uh, of the of the research. And I would like to start from this uh, wall. Uh, maybe Maria remember this wall, but uh, we were in a suburb, in a popular suburb of. Uh, Madrid, and looking at this wall, uh, uh, it seems to me interesting, this idea that uh, uh, we can see, maybe not really see, but something like blurred, no? There's uh, just layers of different uh, graffiti and different story about uh, youth culture in the city. So down there, we can see a ADR that we know it's something coming from the Latin King, but there's also other signs coming from other political history or uh, music culture. And so this wall evoked to us uh, uh, the idea to stay like in a poetic register with uh, our title, no? Uh, persistences, uh, resonances and uh, evanescence. Uh, just to introduce uh, the what's going on in the different uh, research uh, uh, sites across Europe where the ERC project, uh, ERC project uh, is in uh, Marseille, in Milan, in Barcelona, um, and in Madrid. So the idea is to construct here together a space for uh, a theoretical reflection uh, based on uh, the ethnographic research underways in the four uh, uh, cities and the reports uh, of a colleague uh, will go into the detail uh, with the provisional result of this research later on. Uh, so I think that what is important is that uh, the research, the ongoing research, uh, do not focus only on the present. Uh, and we know that uh, uh, to do a good research, the present is not enough, no? Max Weber told that, uh, taught us that uh, there's no sociology without history and there's no history without sociology. I think that we can say something similar about the relation with anthropology. Uh, so the idea of uh, this, uh, the way we address uh, the different city is to take into account uh, a longer uh, period, no? In which this this, the phenomenon of youth street group uh, uh, took shape uh, in the different uh, urban uh, uh, location. Uh, 
so one first element is that in all this uh, city of uh, uh, the research, uh, uh, gang is like uh, an empty uh, and the same time uh, pandemic uh, and floating uh, signifier. Uh, it means that uh, through this term, gang, uh, uh, is labeled a broad social field uh, where migration, uh, youth culture, public order, and social class overlap and are articulated between them. Uh, for example, this, uh, uh, this term, gang, uh, is not applied uh, to the rich, uh, to the white, to the adults uh, with uh, high cultural capital. So it's, uh, it's a signifier that uh, uh, it'll, uh, as a, a floating and a persisting and also a oscillating uh, dimension. So if there's something, uh, if there is something structural in all this story, is that that stigma is a recurring tropos. Uh, and gang members uh, are subjects uh, spoken by the official city. So what we would like uh, to discuss here uh, with you all together is that idea of uh, persistence is what remain, uh, resonances, uh, what circulate, uh, and evanescence is uh, what uh, disappear from the, this different location uh, of the city. Uh, so I will try to pass uh, to the second uh, uh, image. It's, this is an ancient image. Uh, we are in Genova in 2005, but I think that uh, really analogous image uh, could be uh, retrieved uh, in Milan, in Barcelona, in Madrid, uh, in different city of uh, uh, Southern uh, Europe. Uh, so this image is a image uh, constructed by uh, a gaze uh, of the official city. So I will translate it just for uh, uh, the ones, uh, the many who don't understand Italian, say little gangster, uh, baby gangs, uh, it grows the panic uh, about the fury of Guayaquil, something like uh, like this. So it was just the, uh, the um, uh, the, 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 the beginning moment uh, uh, of the arrival of uh, Latinos migration uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, so what we are trying to, 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 to shape uh, is a way to, to address uh, youth street groups uh, through a different gaze. It means uh, just not uh, actors uh, that are uh, playing a character defined by others on the top, but like authors, people who make things because uh, uh, in our point of view, youth gangs produce continuously uh, discourses and practices and are not just only objects and targets of uh, intervention uh, and discourses. So our idea is to start from uh, the metaphor of Italo Calvino when uh, he wrote the invisible city. So we are really interested in uh, reconstruct a gaze uh, on gangs, uh, starting from uh, the possibility of a different uh, gaze. So this different gaze um, uh, is based in the idea to address uh, in between spaces and border zone in order to explore conflicts, friction, changes, accommodation, mediation, constraints, opportunity, expect expectation, and that just not relies only from the official city uh, on the top. Uh, so, for example, when we address the field of mediation, uh, we, we not have the idea uh, to visualize uh, only, the, only the vertical field between the invisible city and the official city, but also to focus uh, on the horizontal uh, link uh, between uh, different uh, uh, youth subjectivities uh, and youth uh, uh, grouping. And uh, in all the location of the research, uh, this in-between space, uh, this horizontal uh, field, 
field uh, is defined, uh, is populated uh, by youth culture. So like uh, music, graffiti, sports, uh, uh, video activism, uh, social network, uh, and so on. So this is a crucial area to uh, cope, to face uh, this shift from uh, actors that have to play some kind of characters. We are the characters just uh, to play the role of a uh, little gangster uh, to authors of something, producer in the social field. Uh, I don't know how many minutes uh, I have, uh, but uh, I would like to, to stay on this image for a, a little while. We are in the same neighborhood of the first uh, image uh, in Madrid. And uh, uh, this is a graffiti done by Latin Kings uh, in a um, project linked to popular sport uh, in the neighborhood. So we have a kind of uh, uh, strange uh, feeling in, uh, uh, in writing uh, uh, the graffiti. So we need some time in order to visualize, to put the uh, black letters with the yellow letters uh, and to identify uh, the words, uh, uh, to compose uh, no, the, the, the term, to compose the words, uh, and so, on, so the concept. Uh, and I think that this is, a, uh, there is a kind of analogy uh, with the idea of comparison that uh, seems to us like uh, something impossible. I mean, uh, cities are not uh, uh, homogeneous unity to compare. We cannot uh, um, imagine a way to address uh, comparison in a mechanical way. Because, uh, I mean, it's like really trivial what I'm saying, but uh, every city is embedded in a specific uh, local history and is linked uh, uh, to a global history, uh, to different uh, national arrangement uh, in terms of uh, welfare state, labor market, uh, and so on and so on. So on our point uh, is not to compare Madrid with Barcelona, with uh, Marseille, uh, with uh, Milan. This, this is not the, the point. And uh, uh, I think that a useful suggestion uh, is in our project uh, uh, to follow the idea of Marcus uh, and also of Burawoy about the possibility of multi-sided and extended case uh, ethnography. So we are more interested in, uh, in chains, uh, in paths, uh, in connection, uh, in conjunction, uh, in uh, just, uh, just position position of uh, uh, location. Uh, and uh, maybe what uh, it would be interesting to, to realize uh, is uh, if it's possible to follow, uh, follow uh, according you know, to the, the invitation of uh, uh, Marcus, uh, if it's possible to follow the people, you know, how people move across this uh, location, uh, follow the conflicts, uh, follow the meanings uh, of the term gangs uh, in the different uh, locations. Uh, by this, uh, it emerged the idea of resonance, uh, that is something uh, different, uh, is more postmodern than uh, uh, comparison assumed in a mechanical way. So what uh, resonates? from one city uh, to uh, another, which kind of uh, different uh, arrangement uh, we can see between uh, a kind of a global scape of gangs. Uh, no, gangs are everywhere, are in music, are in uh, cultural aspect and show industry, uh, are in dressing, uh, this kind of apadura, we call it uh, no, a global scape. Uh, of gangs, but at the same time, there are local fabrication, local arrangement with this term and with these empty signifiers that shift across our different location. Luca, two more minutes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have two more image uh, and about this. Uh, uh, arrangement, accommodation between a global dimension and uh, local histories or national histories. Uh, uh, here you can see uh, an artwork from a Colombian, I think, uh, artist uh, about a center of deportation uh, in Madrid, uh, in uh, Aluche. So when I go to my fieldwork uh, in Madrid, uh, 
uh, I was living in uh, in the neighborhood of this deportation center. So my first day of field work was just to go and wander around the deportation center. And uh, what we realize uh, is that this story is start to be far from the life of the youth uh, street group labeled as uh, gangster. I mean, because uh, there's a, a process of uh, uh, citizenship that uh, transform progressively the relation between this youth experience and the field of the national politics and their incorporation, insertion in society. Of course, this relationship with citizenship is different from Marseille, from Madrid, from, from Milan, because, uh, uh, for example, when uh, in Marseille we address a youth a street gang group, uh, mainly we are speaking about citizen. So uh, that's something really uh, relevant. Uh, and uh, when we, we address a youth street member in Milan, we are not addressing citizens. Uh, and when we address youth street member in Spain, in Madrid, in Barcelona, it's like uh, uh, a mix. Uh, so there's uh, shifting temporalities uh, in society that are progressively uh, framed uh, by the, a post-migration uh, era. Um, and so in, in this frame, uh, gang, these empty signifiers, uh, open and works on different uh, uh, fields. It can uh, work as a way to order in the citizen. I mean, uh, how a, a young uh, French uh, in Marseille uh, from the second or the third generation uh, can be otherized uh, uh, even if he's a citizen, use, using the anti-signifier of gangs, uh, or uh, can be uh, used, uh, this term, uh, to fix uh, and inferiorize in the migrant uh, condition uh, youth that uh, are still in the migrant uh, condition. Uh, so here I think that uh, all the uh, debate, the reflection, the thought of Abdelmalek Sayyad about uh, the idea of uh, inopportune uh, posterity uh, could be really uh, useful uh, for our research and debate. So I would like uh, to finish uh, with uh, this image uh, uh, is about uh, an a art installation uh, in Genova uh, built uh, on a uh, uh, drawing of uh, migrants in transit from uh, uh, Italy to, uh, to France. Uh, just to open the debate and uh, the, the order to the other contribution of the uh, colleagues uh, about some crossing lines. Uh, one point of evanescence, uh, no? These Latino gangs, uh, where are they? Where are these kind of, uh, of gangs uh, that are so important and powerful in construct uh, uh, a moral panic uh, uh, movement uh, in different European cities? Uh, second point, uh, uh, everywhere in Europe, uh, not only in the city of our uh, research, uh, there's a spread of uh, mano dura politics uh, and the law. So to belong to a gang uh, is, uh, is, is, is becoming progressively a crime, uh, as, as it defined by the code of laws. Uh, third point, uh, uh, all the wave of uh, recognition policies that has been opened by the city of Barcelona uh, have been uh, evanished in, in some way. Uh, and this is important uh, point. Uh, four uh, uh, elements uh, is that uh, as the Latino gangs uh, are, uh, are uh, uh, co collapsing in terms of uh, in terms of visibility, there's new scapegoat group emerging in all the uh, location. One is the minors uh, or the unaccompanied minors, uh, and uh, we will see that uh, inside this uh, uh, this uh, label there are a lot of different uh, uh, social groups. Uh, and the other is uh, Muslims. No, the, the so kind of uh, uh, definition of group uh, uh, linked to uh, religious belonging. Uh, 
fifth point, uh, the cruciality of a, a soft mediation. It means not just uh, looking at the uh, vertical dimension between the policies uh, and the uh, scene, the arena of uh, U Street Gang, but look into this uh, horizontal assemblage uh, inside youth group or uh, inside the, the, the social field, field of everyday uh, life. And I think that uh, I will stop uh, uh, here uh, in order to have uh, more time after to discuss uh, after having uh, heard the fantastic uh, contribution of our uh, colleague of Milan, Marsiglia, uh, Madrid and uh, Barcelona. Thanks. Thank you so much, Luca, for your presentation and your reflections. And now uh, we will go on with the presentation um, of Edu Ballester. I will share with you the presentation. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. So go ahead, Edu. Thank you, Nele. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Luca, for, for your introduction. I will try to be short in my presentation uh, to leave time for, for the discussion. This presentation will have two, two main sections. In the first part, we, we are going to observe how the background paper has changed in the last years since the fieldwork start. Uh, and in the second part, I'm going to explain the, the current situation of the fieldwork. No? Uh, it means the progress we've made in, in the last two years, the groups we work with, and some ideas for future, future works. No? Well, you can see the, the title of the presentation is Practices, Meanings and Types of Youth Street Groups in Barcelona and L'Hospitalet. It is a very general title because I'm trying to include all, all, all the groups studied. No? A ver, funciona? Se pasa? Nere? Sí, 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 se ve bien. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, the background paper uh, presents a, a summary of the previous studies of, about Latino youth groups in Barcelona. No? Uh, and the first part of the text focuses on the idea of the evolution from the solid groups to other type of more informal groups. It means we can observe how the traditional Latin groups disappear and new type of groups emerge in, in the city of Barcelona and, and L'Hospitalet. In the second part of the, of the background paper, we explore the process of constitutions of associations of the Latin groups and the effects those process have. No? Uh, we cannot understand the current Latin group situation without exploring these, these, these moments, no? these important moments. And finally, in the last part of the background paper, we explore the idea of the spaces no? in relation to youth street groups. We want to understand the, the social, political and physical space that these youth groups occupy in the city. But maybe the, the most important or the most interesting questions that emerge from the, the combination of the background paper and the, the fieldwork are, are the following questions. No? First, the, what are the, the Latin gangs? No? Uh, have they disappeared? or just they, are they just less visible? No? Uh, second, what about young people from, from North, North Africa? No? Uh, it is also interesting to explore what is happening in the, in the peripheries, in the suburbs, in the neighborhoods. No? How is the life of young people living there? And finally, uh, I think it's also important to analyze who is interacting with these youth groups, no? uh, which institutions or organizations, and also who are the relations between them. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's start with the with the fieldwork in, in Barcelona. No? Uh, it takes place in the cities of Barcelona and Hospitalet del Llobregat. No? They are two different cities, but they are uh, really close. Really, really close. Uh, in fact, they are in the in the same urban continuum. No? Uh, Barcelona is the is the center city and and has important social class differences between neighborhoods. And Hospitalet is mostly a, a working class city with uh, now with a high uh, unemployment rates. No? And specifically in Barcelona, I chose the, the Raval and the and San Pere neighborhoods because they are a, a working class neighborhoods. Uh, they have a high rate of migrant population. Both have suffered gentrification processes, and this has provoked conflict in, in public and space between different groups. Uh, in Hospitalet, 
I choose the neighborhoods of La Torraza and La Florida uh, for similar reasons. No? They are neighborhoods with the highest population densities in Europe. Uh, they have a high migration rate. Uh, also, they have a very high unemployment rate. And finally, both have a strong conflict in the public space. But also, we can see important differences between the, between the two cities. No? In Barcelona, there is a stronger um, social system structure and the institution is also present. Uh, for example, El Raval maybe is one of the neighborhoods with, with more associations in, in, in Barcelona. No? And in L'Hospitalet, we, we can see the, the opposite situation. No? La Florida and La Torrassa have a minor associative network. Uh, the institutions are, are less present. And, and for example, they are no, no street social workers. For the reasons within the same urban space, no? Barcelona and L'Hospitalet, we can have an interesting uh, comparison between two, these two cities. Now I will. Okay, uh, I'm going to put a video clip if I can, uh, because I think I can help us to understand the, the, the first study case. No? Un segundo, second. Nere, si puedes avisarme si funciona. Sí, de momento solo se ha salido la presentación. Si se escucha sobre todo. Sí, perfecto. Song uh, currently has uh, more than 17 million views in, on YouTube, no? Uh, and the singer is from La Florida, this neighborhood of Los Pitales, no? And, and the neighborhood that is also represented in, in all his in all his video clips, as you can see in, in, in this example. Maybe the most important part of his song is the is the explanation about how a young man act, has to act in the in the neighborhood. No? He represents the codes, the loyalty between equals, the attitude towards the police, the marginalized situations, among others. No? It is important in our project in two ways, I think. Uh, on the one hand, because he represents a group of young people with different origins that live together in the same place. No? In, in this case, in Los Bloques, uh, with people from Spanish origins, Dominican, Moroccan, etc. And they act as a, as a special of um, informal street group, I think. In this sense, a, a social educator explained to us that in Los Bloques, in this neighborhood of, of, of Los Pitalet, no? mm -hmm. 
Sorry, un moment. Vull que en fin, a Unic en específic microclima. He says, what you see in los bloques is not seen in the is not seen in the rest of the city. For example, I have seen Dominicans doing the Ramadan. Okay. On the other hand, uh, with moral music, we can also reflect about the concept of MDLR, the, the title of the, of the song, no? Que it means the Meg de la Rue, uh, Boy of the Street, or the chico de la, Chicos de la Calle. No? It has been expanded to everywhere. MDLR is, is used by young people from different places and it can become a quinto of label. I see MDLR is in, in Barcelona, in, in Lleida, as you've seen before, and in other cities. Uh, this label is usually accompanied by a set of attitudes and, and ways of, of understanding life, no? but also on an aesthetic level, I think. Okay, mm, another interesting case study of, of Barcelona is, is the Xmenas group. No? MENA is the acronym of young minor who migrate along to Spain. Uh, this label was created by the Spanish institutions, but it was later adopted by the, by the, by the media and by the right-wing political group. No? And now we could say that is a, a, st a stigmatized level, level, I think. Uh, well, we have aquí, here... Oh, se ha movido la... Sorry. Uh, Xmenas is, is a group of young migrant people who organize themselves in an informal way to help other young people who came along to, to Barcelona. No? Most of the young people from Exmenas group have left their adolescence in juvenile centers or in, in, in juvenile prisons. No? No, I, juvenile centers, I think, is the, is the, is the word. The, world, the group was created uh, three years ago and they have been doing different activities, as for example, giving support to young people living on the streets or mediating in neighborhood conflicts. And recently, in the last year, and they have also emerged as a social movement calling for demonstrations and, and, and protests. No? The second group, uh, the second study case, is happening in San Pere, in, in, in Barcelona. Uh, another one, uh, in relation to the, to the Latin kings, uh, other case of study, of a study, we are doing historical research. No? They were very important for the city in the last two, two decades ago. Uh, Carles and Lucas studied them in, in depth, but uh, right now their presence is, is, is lower. No? It, it for this reason that we are going to focus on the evolution of the oldest members of the group. We found that more than a, the formal group, now they are a, a, a special a, a, a group of friends, I think. They are doing different activities, like, uh, for example, a musical project, a, a sport project, etc. No? It is important to highlight that somehow the group has disappeared from the, from the, from the public space. And finally, mm, I would like to talk about another specific case. It's, it's, it's Las Canchas in Lleida. No? Uh, Saint George Project has a, an ethnographic approach. I think we cannot in, in ignore a case like this. No? Um, now I'm going to give you some, just, some, just some types uh, about it. Lleida is a city located two hours from, from Barcelona. I'm from there. Um, Las Canchas is a specific place where young people from different origins uh, meet together every day. No? Uh, we could say that these young people is a mix of the previous cases explained today, you know, ex-member of Latin groups, uh, young North Africans, young people who, who migrated alone, and others. No? They also defend themselves as MDLRs. Uh, they practice activities like boxing in the middle of the streets, uh, singing hip-hop freestyle songs, playing basketball, etc. No? Finally, we have observed some dynamics that I think could serve to open the, the debate of, of this session. No? You can see them in the slide. No? Uh, first of all, hip hop and rap as a, as a common point of all the groups. Uh, second one, from conflict between groups to conflict with others, no? the role of the, of the police. <laughs> and third, the, the, pre the persistence of structural violence. I think it's the most important, most important um, thing. Social class inequalities, citizenship rights, marginality, marginality and poverty, and social and political repression. Maybe we can we can discuss it, it later. Okay. Thank you, Nelly. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Eduard. And uh, for sure, we will have time at the end to discuss these interesting reflection uh, reflections. Yes. 
And now we will go on with the presentation of our research um, Maria, yes, Maria Oliver in, in Madrid. And I think Maria first would like to share uh, a map with us. Uh, yes, um, very shortly, um, I wanted to to show you a map if it is possible. Okay, uh, let me see if you can see it. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so very shortly, this is the map of the city of Madrid and some surrounding cities. Uh, the dots we can see here are the places where we are carrying on our research, our research sorry. And mainly we are focusing on the, on the neighborhoods of Ciudad Lineal, that is this one. As you can see here, with uh, different different colors that belong to different groups we are investigating there. Here, the this path with a special interest in Santa Eugenia, Pacifico, and um, Santa de Vallecas. And here we have Villaverde, Villaverde and Ciudad de Los Angeles, but mainly we are focusing on Villaverde Bajo. The dots represent the different groups we are investigating. Uh, we have blue dots for Dominican Don't Play, DDP. We have yellow dots for Latin Kings and Queens. And we have a green dots for Trinitarios groups. These are the groups we are working with and which we have uh, fine participants that want to collaborate in the research. And now we are going with the, um, with the presentation. Can you share it, Nelly, or do I? Yes, I will share it with all of you. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. Mm. I cannot see it. No, no, it's like in progress, no. but That's this it. is. Wait a minute, I will try again. Okay, I'm opening it anyway, just in case. I'm open mine. Oh, this I think is really is strange. Important. Okay, would you like to try to share your screen? If not, I will upload it again. Yeah, don't you worry. Let me try one second. Yeah. I'm trying to upload it again. Okay, maybe it is because it is uh, some of these map uh, incompatibilities, but I'm open it anyway. Ah, now I think it's possible. Well, let me see. Yeah. I, I think it is working now. Okay. Okay, perfect. Here we go, thank you. Well, as I, as I told you, we are working with uh, the groups of Latin Kings, DDPs, and in, in a more residual way with a group of called Trinitarios. We are working with these groups because they were the groups we have more access to and who have shown so um, disposition to, to collaborate with, with the project and also because we, we had already established Previous, previous ties with these, with these groups because, well, Carles Feja, the idea of the project, has been working, for example, with Latin Kings Group for about 20 years. So we are not, we don't pretend to make a comparative, as my mate said before, about how gangs are different in different places or how gangs have make a complete evolution since the time they, they arrived to, to Spain and to Europe. But uh, I would like to make a, um, an overview of what groups were, these groups were, when they arrived in Spain in, in the year 2000, at the beginning of, of the 21st century, and what the groups are now, how, how we found the groups when we, when we have gone back to the field. So in the year 2000, we have newly arrived groups with imported rules and behavior. This means that they, they carry with them the group 
and the group roles that in, in, in most of the cases were roles adapted already to the context of Latin America from the US where they were originally born. Uh, membership was mainly in, the, in that time composed by migrants from Latin America, from teenage migrants, also some people around 20, 25 years old. And there was a strong identification of group nationality. This means that in that time, Latin kings were strongly related to Ecuador, their DDPs were strongly related to the Dominican Republic, like Nietas were also strongly related to Ecuador, and uh, Trinitarios were strongly related to the Dominican Republic. The groups had uh, developed in Spain in their first years a strong pyramidal nationwide structures. This means that there were different uh, small cells, cells of the groups in different cities, but they have nationwide organizations. The groups were segregated, but male and female groups, and also it is different, and the, the segregation goes to the levels in the, uh, in the different groups. It has always been there. It has appeared with more or less levels of responsibility or participation or active participation of women in the groups. And at the beginning, when they arrived, they were they used to display uh, eye-catching membership-related items like jewelry, clothes. In the case of the Latin kings, for example, they were gold and black clothes with beads, with uh, crowns. It, all the symbolism of the group was visible. And um, what we have now, what we have found out now when we have gone back to the field is that the groups have established, okay, and they have new rules that are adapted to the media they are now. They are adapted to the environment of the city they live on. They adapt it to the different life conditions and the rules have been adapted to that conditions. The membership is much more heterogeneous now. We have native people from, um, from Spain that has been born in Spain from Spanish families. We have migrant teenagers from Latin America, but also from the South and the East of Europe and also for Africa. There is in some groups still a strong identification group nationality, but not as it was before. We will see this in a moment. The structures have been reduced to regional structures and also there are some national relationships. There is no that strong formation, that is strong um, leadership that can take all the group for the whole nation. The groups are still sex segregated, that doesn't change it much. But the membership related items are more inconspicuous. It's not so easy to identify a member of one group or the other only by sight as it was when they, when they arrived. We talk about plural lines when we refer to that heterogeneous membership. It means that to be a migrant is not a status anymore. It's, it's not a requirement to enter the group anymore as it used to be before. But there is it is still a strong reverence, there is a strong participation of some local symbols, some sorry, some national symbols among others. For example, with the DDPs, they still show reverence for the flag. They also show uh, different um, different uh, DDPs and Trinitarios show a difference in the colors they, they use, for example, with the green for the Trinitarios and, and and not for the DDPs, but the, all the colors refer to the Dominican flag. I don't know what happened with the presentation here. Something has been lost because behind that flag, there is a, a testimony of a mother of one of the, of the DDP member that says that, um, well, the, the, the sentence is, bueno, pues es una pasión por la bandera dominicana y una cosa que no llego a entender, pero bueno, pues es parte de esto, ¿no? So there is a passion for the Dominican flag. It's something that she cannot understand, but that she understands it is there and it is part of the group. In the case of Latin kings, for example, Latin king and queens consider themselves and call themselves a nation. So they have their own flags, proper of the nation, and they saw correspondence with two American cities, North American cities, other Chicago and New York. They consider the origin of the gang, 
but they don't refer to a specific country, not even the USA, but the cities of Chicago and New York are the ones that are the reference. We also talk about uh, loose structures because they are not as tight as they used to be. There is no gang that we know nowadays in, in Spain that has an only um, an, an unique um, direction over all the groups of the same gang in the different territories. They have good relationships, they have some, even some international relationships, but there are no bonds of subordination as they were when, when these groups arrived to Spain. The, in, in the case of inside the nation, inside Spain, uh, regional groups are interrelated and they share some, some directions, but they are not interdependent, they can work independently. This shows, in, in, among other things, uh, an adaptation to the environment, uh, different situations, and they also have to, be with the, have to do with the public policies in the regions they live. So it's not the same um, a group in Madrid, for example, where belonging to the gang is already a crime, the, the group in Valencia or the group in Barcelona where they have uh, some possibilities or some more mediation opening from the um, from the governments so this makes a difference with the groups um, finally when we refer to mediation uh, we we don't always consider uh, small mediation uh, items that the groups carry on every day so we talk about intercultural mediation intergroup and with other social agents and this means that Inside the groups, the heterogeneity of the membership has has made that the groups have learned uh, to to adapt to different people, customs, and traditions that integrate in the group. So one of them, some of them have more weight than any others, but they learn to relate to each other, following some basic intercultural mediation patterns that maybe they don't even identify as a as a mediation strategy that we consider is a natural mediation and uh, we consider groups members are in in many cases good agents of mediation because they are able to relate to different cultural situations but they are also able to help some of the members and even to communicate with the institutions they are able to make some deals with between groups and other stakeholders and so as to make the, the, their living easier. Okay. We also find that mm, in many cases, conflictivity or hostility or tolerance among groups depend on leaders' natural mediation abilities. And so this happens with, for example, um, one, one of, the, of the neighborhoods we study, that is Villaverde, and one of the members of the DDP group explains in an interview that um, there was a, a, they call them older they have like the old persons los mayores in the groups and the younger persons so the los mayores are the authorities and he says that there was one of these mayores one of these old leaders that was calm that was relaxed and that he was in good terms with all leaders of the ddps and they respect each other they say that they were all from the neighborhood that they all lived in the neighborhood and they have to respect the neighborhood and all of that. So there was no conflict in the neighborhood among DDPs and Trinitarios because they respect each other in base of the mediation abilities of both leaders. But that leader left and when the other one came, he was less uh, calm, he, was, he had less uh, mediation abilities, so he felt less uh, impelled to, to mediate and to work with other groups. And so the um, conflictivity arised again in the, um, in the neighborhood. So we consider it a good um, example of how can groups mediate inside groups, among groups, and even with other associations or with other stakeholders. And here we have a, a photo of one of the, um, of the activities we have carried on with a group of Latin kings in, in Madrid, that is a mediation seminar 
that we uh, carried on with the uh, Autonomous University of Madrid and Association Rumiña with the Disney Association in Madrid in the in the neighborhood of Tidea Lineal that work with these uh, with these young people. So this is the point where we are now, and I am leaving it here so we have time for 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 the dialogue at the end of the of the session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maria. And now we will have we have the pleasure to share uh, the research um, from Paolo in in Milan. So now I will share with you his presentation. One minute, please. Okay, can you see it? Yes, thank you very much, Nere. Okay, go ahead, Paolo. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Um, so, uh, Gangs of Milan, where are you? Uh, this could be my very non-academic and uh, desperate question that guided my research since uh, January 2019 within the Trans Gang project. While Milan was described, at least in 2017, as the European capital of Latin American gangs, uh, my fieldwork could only uh, recompose some traces of a social phenomenon that seemed almost disappeared. Thus, through an archaeological approach, I could say, I tried to follow some of these traces, understand what was going on in the Milanese streets. Where were the youngster migrants of the city? How did they, their forms of sociability change in the last few years? And above all, why did it change apparently so fast? Answering these questions meant moving from a history of the Latin American street groups of Milan to a social analysis of new practices connected to the urban territory. Within this movement, I discovered or rediscovered rap music and the marginal neighborhoods of Milan. Uh, referring to Milanese Latin American gangs, it is quite easy to find a starting point. In fact, at the beginning of 2000, a new social phenomenon appeared in some Italian cities. Firstly, in Genova and Milan, small groups of young Latin Americans started to meet on street corners in public parks and at some discotheques. A new moral panic de uh, developed. Also in Italy, street gangs have appeared. Uh, these new Italian street groups had some peculiarities. They were a contemporary phenomenon the result of uh, uh, recent migration dynamics connected to transnational practices and globalized imaginaries. Uh, in Milan, a group of uh, researchers started working on this issue using a particip participatory perspective. The group was related to an independent research agency called Codici. They started to work in the streets of Milan, trying to develop a mediation process between those groups and the Milanese institutions. The street groups of Milan negotiated through their practices a new provisory identity in search of freedom and social emancipation. That identity was constructed in contraposition to other groups at a symbolic level and also through violent conflicts. A Latin American Milan was inscribed in the urban space through specific practices and imaginaries. After that, gangs in Milan seemed to disappear from the Italian Academy. The first police operations in Milan dated back to 2005, but repression grew more intense between 2012 and 2015, when four police operations followed one after the other. Latin American gangs of Milan experienced an escalation of violence. Other new groups added to the old ones. 
Latin Kings, Commando and Nietans, and the, the Central American Mara Salvatrucha and uh, Barrio de Siocho also appeared. After spending months trying to get uh, some contacts with uh, ex-gang members of those years, I got the telephone number of uh, K, a former leader of the Milanese clique of Mara Salvatrucha. I met him in, uh, in the last year, in 2019. And uh, he told me, well, I started creating my, my clique. Uh, at, at that moment, I was uh, not thinking of anything. I used to steal, we hit people. However, attacks as serious as in, in El Salvador, such as murders, never happened here at that time. We almost always avoided confrontations. While social researchers stopped investigating the social phenomenon, gangs of Milan evolved. For the very first time, gang violence was directed outside of the groups of the Latin American communities. In uh, 2015, another clique of Mara Salvatrucha, form, formed by uh, uh, a new generation of Mareros, not in relation with um, K, K's group, attacked a ticket a trainer inspector at Milano Villa Pizzone train station. One of the boys pulled a machete out and severely injured the inspector, who almost lost his arm in the attack. Latin American uh, gangs in Milan seemed weaker and more fragmented than some years ago. Thus, their apogee can uh, be dated back to 2015-2016. There are certainly other groups with a high, higher criminal profile, but they are hardly observable. Two recent homicides show that somehow gangs still exist in Milan. The first one in March 2019 is linked to Mara Salvatrucha. The second one, June uh, 2019, to Pandilla um, 18. So, some of my interlocutors argued that my difficulty in finding street groups in Milan was uh, also linked to changes in the way youngsters socialized. For example, a manager of a social cooperative that has implemented several street education projects over the last 15 years, during an interview, explained to me that the public space of the city does not provide stable meeting points for groups of adolescents. And young boys and, and boys and girls nowadays, nowadays, they use WhatsApp. They don't hang out around, she stated, uh, maybe too uh, peremptorily. In parallel, public space of Milan was targeted by specific policies aimed to regulate it in a repressive way. However, I was, I was surprised to uh, read some uh, newspaper articles that used the term gang to refer to a new phenomenon concerning the city of Milan. In some marginal neighborhoods, groups of youngsters, children of Italian and foreign citizens, began to come together to make rap music. Some of, of their members were linked to deviant acts like uh, robberies, drug dealing, fights. Some were arrested too. For uh, these reasons, they attracted the attention of the local media. Actually, they also named themselves as gangs. I was even more surprised when I discovered that one of these groups was located within San Siro, the social housing neighborhood where I have been working since 2017, collaborating with an action research group of the Polytechnic of Milan that uh, there opened an office in uh, 2014. Neymar, Saki, Valle Payne, Rondò da Sosa, Keta, uh, these are some of the names of these young, uh, young rappers. Uh, I can put here in the chat um, uh, a video I, I will do. 
later so you can also see them. Uh, Italian and second generation kids whose parents came from Egypt, Morocco, but also from uh, Peru and other Latin, Latin American countries who made rap their main expressive language. Singles on Spotify, videos on YouTube, often, often set in the, in, in the neighborhood, one after the other, month after month. Their lyrics are similar. They speak about uh, suburbs, drugs, money, prison, uh, the repertoire of the transnational imaginary of the ga gangster rapper. All of them express also a deep bond with their neighborhood and with their area, Zone 7, using the name of the district where San Siro is uh, located. Through rap, on the one hand, the stigma that marks that portion of urban territory is turned over into uh, an emblem. On the other, the neighborhood and the city are rede redefined and re-signified. Here you can find also uh, an example of, uh, of, this, uh, of these lyrics. Uh, I put a, a translation. In order to interpret this phenomenon, I am combining a literature linked to the concept of uh, territoriality with the field of subcultural and post-subcultural studies, trying to understand how music and uh, certain transnational imaginaries gave those guys hope and the possibility of thinking about themselves elsewhere, even uh, starting from an extreme attachment to their own neighborhood, to, to their zone. So, to conclude, this second phase of, uh, of my work was um, profoundly limited by the current epidemic. My contacts with the rappers of San Siro were sporadic, this is the truth. However, I could follow them on their social networks, Instagram and Facebook, for example, establish a relation with a couple of them, even if they were not core members, interview some of some stakeholders observing they are meeting uh, points i discovered that uh, the san siro's rappers as well as the old latin american street groups of milan mix local and global dimensions however why latin american street groups were ethnically homogeneous the san siro rappers show more hybrid hybrid hybridity, sorry. These rappers have a nomadic identity, yet still rooted in a specific portion of urban territory that Zone 7 idealized in their lyrics. Between structural constraints and freedom of action, rap provides many of these youngsters with the subcultural capital with which to oppose social and economic marginalization. Within this capital, the, the fascination with crime and gangs plays a particular role, which only in some extreme cases turn, turns into actual deviant practices. Rather, rap helps uh, those guys to establish a symbolic order, overturning the dominant one. Rap plays a fundamental role in the process of re-territorialization of the city, in which those youngsters find themselves living, just as the street groups of at, at the beginning of 2000, at the same time in a similar and different way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paolo, for your presentation. And now we will go on with our last presentation by our researcher in Marseille, Juan Mancilla. Ahora os comparto. I want to speak before and after we can share the content, okay? Okay, yes. Okay, can you see me now? Yes, we see you. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, I am very happy to be today with you, but I need to say I am a little disappointed with this, this kind of connection, but I am so happy with the people from America and North Africa. Um, the, um, I will explain some ideas about Marseille. 
what I want to do right now is to give you a kind of picture of what has happened today in Marsella and my feeling in this last uh, almost one year ago when I moved to Marsella to doing this, this ethnography. So it's, it's very nice, I think, to be, to, be the, to be in the last moment of this presentation because I can't, I know now what is happening or, or what my, my colleagues are doing in Barcelona, Madrid, Milan, and what is the difference with Marsella? So my first point is about uh, these young people. Who is these young people? Um, in Marsella, we need to know something very important about migration. And I know Barcelona, Milan, Madrid has the same. But here, as Lucas said at the beginning, it's not 20 years ago migration. It's almost in the 60s, Algerian people mainly come from North Africa. And today there are, there are a guy, there are these young people, is born in Marseille. So this is the first point, migration. Uh, the second point is about the, the narratives. This, what um, Paolo uh, called transnational uh, imaginaries. So this, this globalization is very important. And I need to say that today, doing ethnography with young people, we need to introduce uh, communication technologies. When you see these people in Marseille, everyone, nobody, uh, the, the, the neighborhood, in the more poor neighborhood, you have uh, phones, you have internet. So it's very important, this second point, internet, and there are differences with Barcelona, with, with what is happening, for example, in North America. On I heard about um, uh, what is happening maybe in Barcelona. In Marsella, there are no war gangs. What is the meaning? That in Marsella, uh, the network of drug selling, you can have people working from Comoro, uh, parents, working from uh, Algeria, Morocco, they are all French, and there are no this kind of rivalry. And police know that, and police has a kind of tolerance with this kind of illegal activities. So the, the word gang is more about narratives, and you have in the streets young people doing video, young people listen this music, and they took all this, um, this gang imaginary, of course, does exist. Of course, there are uh, murders. Of course, there are all that. But for the second city in France, there is not so much of this kind of war gangs. So you don't really have these uh, United States lifestyle gangs from many years ago. You have uh, people, or young people, uh, racing in poor neighborhoods. And they know from very childhood uh, stage, and they go to work. Sometimes they they have a, a professional formation. They come back, and there are always this is the tier point. There are always this network of drug selling. So this is a very important point in Marsella. Is this kind of banality? This kind of uh, everybody knows where you can buy. Uh, marijuana, hashish, in every point of the city is very common. When you speak with people that uh, has more years doing ethnography in Marseilla, for example, this morning I meet uh, Philippe Pujol. Philippe Pujol is the is the David Simon, the French David David Simon. So he told me that in Marseilla, uh, hashish and marijuana is legal. What does it mean that police know? what is happening in the networks, but they don't want a frontal conflict. Very different situation what is happening in Paris. So I will try to give you some points on this, uh, on this work. And, and my work in, in Marseilla is, is about um, participating in many activities of these young people especially sport and culture. This is, this is my, my goal here, is looking for good practice. 
And this is a very, very tricky point because good, what is good practice? And I think this is a transversal point in Transgang uh, because we, as uh, local, re local researchers, we are looking for good practice. But good practice in the neighborhoods, when you speak with young people, it's, it doesn't anything, it doesn't mean anything. And I give you an example, and after that, I, I will show you some pictures so you can recognize more I, uh, I'm telling you. The last one, in, in July, I saw a swimming pool, inflatable swimming pool in the neighborhood where I am doing the, the, the demographic work. There are many young people, almost 60, 70 young people, uh, playing with the swimming pool. There are these gangster style music. The police is two blocks ago. And some days after, I can see, I, I can speak with uh, some uh, uh, educators and, and people working, adult people. And they told me, this is the, the network of young people selling drugs that put every summer this swimming pool. So swimming pool is very necessary in this neighborhood because there are not so much um, green space. Today there are more and more, but, but you don't have in this neighborhood, you don't have green space. You don't have this kind of culture that uh, globalization, job culture are asking. So uh, what is good practice? This is good practice because um, then uh, young people selling drugs are buying swimming pool for the entertainment of these, uh, the little ones. Uh, this is a kind of example of this of this good practice. Uh, what is the what is the what is the difficult to know what is good, what is not good? Uh, does exist? Uh, this is the the four point, and and I want to I want to finalize my this this this, this presentation with the idea of global narratives. Uh, and this, I, I think this is one common point in the four cities. There are this kind of narrative uh, spreading out, spreading in, in, the, in the internet about what is the gang, the gang, what is a gang, and how a gang needs to act. So information technology and how this information technology and the way young people are using, in my opinion, has to be a, a main point in any ethnography you are doing today with young people. But the tricky point is you are not only supposed to do an ethnography on internet, because internet is a kind of a closed box doing the same and the same, and there is no necessary what I do uh, finding on internet. It's not necessary what is happening in the streets. So I think uh, local researchers like the work we are doing uh, in 2021, we need to mix both, but we need to pay attention to what's happening in virtual and also on the streets. So right now I want to share with you some image about this Marseilla today. I don't know if Nele you can share. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, okay, this first picture is the first thing you see when you arrive to Marseille. This is the Gare uh, Saint Charles. Uh, it's a mountain city. This is very beautiful. It's one of the most uh, surprising and beautiful landscape uh, from this part of the earth. And this is the neighborhood where I am doing the field work. So you can, you can see young people are living in big towers. And there are some spaces, uh, all, many times these spaces are, uh, there are not so much public um, funding to renew this space. So there are more and more uh, precarious states. And you, you can see here downtown, 
uh, in Marseilla, there are many young people in the streets. Uh, can I say they are French people, but they, they are speaking Arabic, for example. Uh, there are black, there are Arabian, some are uh, white. So this is the Marseilla style, no? There is a melting point, melting pot about uh, with these young people. This is internet. This is very common to see today in Marseilla, young people doing video clips, young people doing graffitis on the street to promote, to make publicity about your uh, their YouTube uh, channel. And everybody has an Instagram. Everybody has a Snapchat. Uh, they are looking more. The information comes to 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 young people's minds by Instagram, by Snapchat. So we need to know what is happening with these channels of, of information. What is the what is the role of these channels? And migrant. This is another point. Uh, I am very concerned, not only because I am very close. I am I am living very close. Where I, uh, in the city where there are migrants camps from uh, sub-Saharan countries, and you know Marseille is a big port uh, like Italia, receiving many people. And uh, Marseille is in the road from another countries, and some of these migrants mm, is necessary. They are they are they are related with young people from from Marseille, so. Network drug sellings, but good practice also are uh, are related with that. This is, for example, uh, a big uh, building receiving migrant people in downtown. So migration is very, very visible. This kind of uh, clandestino in Marsella. This is downtown. Downtown. Uh, in Marseilla, you have uh, the most poor neighborhoods in the center, like an, in a, um, it's, it's an exception in, in Europe. In Europe, in Paris, for example, or in other countries like Barcelona, maybe it's more common, or Milan, you have these poor neighborhoods more in the periphery. In Marseilla, you have in the center. And this is very common, maybe people from North Africa, um, Latin America, we are very, very familiar with this kind of space on the streets where you you can buy fruits and vegetables on the street. This is very common also in downtown. This is Mother's Day meeting. People take the sun. It's a very sunny city. So uh, almost every, every all the year there are people on the street. So a street is a, is, is a big point in, in Marseille. And this is the good practice. Uh, I don't know what is, if, if I, I can say good practice, it depends who say good practice, but it's only for, to be more simple. simple. Uh, some examples, circus, theater, uh, Les Maraudes, this food uh, to, to people on the streets, uh, John people doing some, some uh, positive uh, pictures and positive uh, fresque for in this neighborhood or calling uh, garbage to my quartier, my neighborhood will be clean, Masité Valbrillé. Uh, communication, this is very paradoxical because I told you that there are internet and uh, every young people has a smartphone. But there are paper communication, uh, association and uh, ONGs working on the, 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 the first contact of young people are using still paper communication. So could be in some times a kind of archaeological, like uh, as Paolo say, paper communication, I don't know, I'm not sure. And this is the same first picture, if you remember, there are the towers where people live in. Uh, there are there are not so much green space as you can see, and Euromed is a big project with many many interests with capitalist uh, vision about what is good. Also, like in Medellin, uh, people in Medellin know that this is social urbanism, 
And there are many critics, uh, but does exist this kind of concertation. And this is very funny because uh, this is called in programmation issue du dialogue citoyen. It means uh, citizen citizens are concerting this. But if you're looking very well in the picture, you see that there are only one little child, a black little child. All the old people, almost the majority is, is, is white. So when I present, that, when I see that, I was with uh, people from the neighborhood, I, they told me that. This is not a consultation. Anybody asked to us to come here. There are no black people, there are no Arabic. What is that? So they was a little frustrated about that, this kind of, of proposition. But I think we need to compare uh, this kind of proposition. We need to know to, to learn so much about what is happening in Medellin. If you want to know about this change and Barcelona, of course, Barcelona is one of the first cities and uh, doing this kind of social urbanism. Uh, okay, uh, this is the, the end picture. This is a very normal picture. There are many people of the street. There are young people. There are many senior people, Chibanese. Uh, and I like this picture because it's very, it's very Marseilla. It's very, Marseilla is a very uh, enigmatic city. It's a kind of city still uh, uh, trapped on time but very, very different with what is happening in all the France. And this is a very funny point when I have a, a Spanish telephone. Um, when I am in Marseille, I take the train to Paris, 30 minutes after, always I used to receive an uh, SMS on my telephone, welcome to France, when I get out 30 minutes from Marseille. So Marseille and Marseille people are in a kind of resistance uh, against the rest of the France, even if, if it's not true necessarily, but you need to know that Marseille is not necessarily the, the, the cliche of, of France. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you so much, Juan, for uh, your presentation and sharing with us the impressions from Marseille. They have been really interesting, like all of the presentations, and now we have time for to share together our questions we have and comments and etc. And you can do this via the chat. So if you want to ask something or make a comment, you can uh, do this via the chat or you can raise your hand like Carla did right now and I will give him uh, the possibility to, to speak now. So just to let you know, and I think also we have a question by Katya. I don't know, Katya, if after Carlos you would like to ask this to uh, Juan by yourself, or I can read your uh, your question. Okay, Carlos, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for all your presentation. It, it has been a very rich session, very uh, with a lot of data, a lot of reflections, and also uh, implicitly a lot of comparative uh, uh, findings. Uh, I have two two reflections. First, first reflection, in fact, the the, the main question is, did gangs still exist or, or they disappear? Because it does, that, those two last uh, decades seems that in Milano, in Marseille, in Barcelona, in Madrid, gangs are not the same, are invisible, are even are not uh, are not existing in in the the classical uh, the classical way we understood we understood gangs. Uh, must we change the the label or or what? Or, or is just a metamorphosis, a, um, a transformation of what we understand by gangs. Second question is um, the, 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 key, the concept by Luca Queirol of uh, soft mediation. In fact, in all, in the four presentations, there, there is a lot of information about the role of, uh, of music, of social workers, of positive uh, gangs, etc. But uh, but it it means that there is a a hard mediation, an institutional mediation that still that doesn't exist, and on the other side there is, there is many small more more mi more micro experience of of natural of or cultural mediation. And the third question is the emergence of so-called hybrid street groups 
in which Latino and Arab uh, youngsters meet. Not only the video of Bar uh, the interesting video of in Barcelona, that uh, it's reggaeton, but the song is uh, is by a, a seems to be a Moroccan boy, the the singer. But also in the other place, there are there, is, there are many experiences of in Milano, not not just in Marseille maybe, but in Milano, in Madrid, in in Barcelona, there there are many experiences of hybrid. I think. And finally, I, I invite Carmen Lecardi, who is a member of the, our advisory board and also advising in Milano uh, team. Though, if she can participate, I invite her to participate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. Um, I'm just thinking about maybe we can, we can maybe someone of you of the. Uh, of the local researchers would like to answer uh, the, the reflections and the questions from Carlas before we go on with the next, with Katya and with her question. What do you think? Somebody would like to comment on that or maybe we wait until the end and then we, we maybe we collect first the questions and then we, we answer the questions. I okay. Can Paolo. Yeah. Well, thank you, Carlos, for your uh, reflections and just two, two, two things. The first one, yes, there are gangs in Milan, uh, probably with a high, higher crime, criminal profile. So uh, there are uh, uh, more hidden than, than before. And uh, uh, well, when I, I I had an interview with a, a policeman, um, the, the the man in chief of the Squadra Mobile, the, the, the police uh, on the streets of Milan, and he said, uh, yes, there are, but we are talking about uh, uh, a very small uh, group of uh, of people. Uh, he said like. Uh, 30, 30, 30 young, youngsters. Uh, so, uh, if we we are looking for the traditional, uh, we could say um, gangs in Milan, we 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 will not find them. So, uh, something uh, I think uh, uh, has changed, and this is the the interesting part uh, I think of. Uh, uh, of um, my my research of our research because I I found a similar reflection also in the other presentations and uh, the other thing about uh, imaginaries yeah I think uh, this is also very interesting this global uh, scape of this uh, uh, narrations that uh, uh, we can find uh, in in Madrid uh, in uh, in uh, in Milan. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the video uh, that uh, uh, Edward showed uh, is very similar to the, the Milanese uh, video clips that you can find on on YouTube. And uh, yes, we we uh, we we have uh, certainly uh, focused our attention on uh, the, the virtual and and the and the reality, as uh, uh, Juan said before. Uh, Probably, I think, uh, in a circular in a circular way, I think that uh, virtual affects reality, and reality affects virtual, and these two uh, poles are very, very connected. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. <clears throat> yes, Juan. Uh, just just about the question uh, about um, hard mediation, Carlos. Carlos asking, uh, for example, for Marseille, um, I think it's uh, what I know today is not like in, in Barcelona experience like Cesar with Latin Kings and Carlos know very well. Um, it is very different here. It is very structural. What is uh, government and public policies are doing with young people on the streets? So as many years ago, government understand that local association, and this is also to answer the Katia 
question is people living in the neighborhood that take the control of this local association and they are demanding funding for this local association but they don't what is happening with latin kings with there are a special program with a special uh, researcher with a funding with a with a vision about what is what we need to do because we think there are a security problem here is more it, it could be very funny but it's like a, like in films police go directly to speak and this is philippe uh, pujol that told me today they go directly to speak with with the leaders of these uh, drug selling networks and say we have a problem stop to doing that but tolerance continue and after that how we uh, government go supporting to culture to sports is passing through this local association that are leading from young people around 40 years old so it's the same people that in the 20s was maybe working in these drawing networks after they have maybe a family they move to another neighborhood or they still in the neighborhood and take the control from this local association so this is why the french model doing this kind of mediation always passing through this local association and this is a kind of problematic because the, for example in medellin i can see more more uh, more more ground more bottom activity people don't wait what is government doing by that but here in marseilla if we want to do something legal we wait for what is government proposed if we want to do something that is not legal is different but both legal and illegal there are always the government eyes Thanks, Juan. Um, so Katya had a question also for you. Um, Katya, I don't know if you want to ask the question yourself. If not, I can read it. Um, okay, I think I, I can just read it. Ah, ahora sí. <laughs> okay. Um, I can speak to much English, I'm sorry, okay? Um, uh, my question is uh, about Marseilla. Is, is in Marseilla are good practice created uh, by neighborhoods or community uh, entities? The uh, social location. Uh, you say the social location uh, have uh, the ne uh, drugs neighbor 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 no me sale redes uh, the narcotráfico. And you can explain. Uh, if it is, 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 is. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I think I, I, I listen. It's okay, Katya. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, you don't listen. I, I can give you an example with uh, with soccer. Uh, there are a new soccer, very beautiful soccer field in the neighborhood where I am doing field work. Young people that are in the drug and selling, but not only drug and selling, what you need to understand is that young people are moving in different spheres, not only drugs, not only work, not only studies, or maybe they call the knee knee in Spain, but doing nothing. They are moving every time, moving around that. But the, this, the people are in the network of drugs comes directly to this local association and say, we want to make a soccer team. We have the right. We live here. Uh, nobody, if we are in the, in the bad way, we want to, to, to play soccer. So this good practice sometimes comes from this base, like in other countries. But most of the time, all these good practices are focalized by ONGs, and like I explained before, that are led by people living in the in the neighborhoods or from uh, young people that are looking for different ways. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Adam, you also had a question. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, 
No, sorry, one sec, I can't share the bit. Can you see me? Yeah, now I think, no. Yes, now. Yeah, can you hear me? You can hear me, right? Yes, we so, hear you. So I, 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 the question's really for Maria, but I think it applies to, to all of the speakers as well a bit. And it's the question of mediation. I felt, so just a, a kind of quick comment. I felt that we probably need to be a little bit more specific about what we mean by the term mediation. So I understand it. The, the logic implies a relationship between two individuals, two organizations or whatever. Uh, and then a third party intervenes in that relationship. That's what mediation is. So you can have a man and a wife and they're in dispute and a lawyer intervenes, for example. Or you can have two gangs, they're in dispute and a third gang or a third in, in entity intervenes. Well, then some of the examples of mediation seem to just be a kind of willingness to cooperate with another gang. That's not a mediation, is it? That's just a kind of a willingness to cooperate. I think that it's important to distinguish between these concepts, because I think mediation has a quite specific meaning. And one, so that's just general comment, but, but a more specific comment is coming from what Maria discussed, was this idea that, uh, of the natural mediator. And I think I, I use that term as well in what I wrote about mediation. But then I also think to a certain extent, how often do I, oh, sorry, that's my dog. Uh, how, often, <laughs> how often do I actually mediate in a relationship, right? So I can imagine, let, let's say my friend falls out with his girlfriend. Imagine I go and mediate in that relationship. That's actually quite a, a dangerous thing to do, right? Socially problematic thing to do. How often do we really mediate in each other's relationships, in, in each other's uh, disputes? So there is a kind of tendency in the mediation literature to say, oh, mediation happens all the time, and sometimes it's informal and sometimes it's not. But actually, it's quite a specific thing, right? But at the same time, what Maria kind of nicely showed was that the, the Latin gangs in Madrid actually use this, this, this logic of mediation. And I kind of wondered to what extent is that a product of the kind of discourse on gang mediation? Because I think... The discourse on gang mediation is one of the places where we most often find the concept of mediation culturally. You, okay, you can find it in legal disputes, in commercial disputes, but socially we don't often come across this concept mediation. It's off, but we do often come across it in the in the discourse on gangs. Um, sorry, wrong way. Uh, so, so my, I, I wonder to what extent. Uh, and this is a question for Maria, are, are the gangs kind of internalizing this logic of mediation within their day-to-day -day relationships? Are they kind of, because of this emphasis on gang mediation, because of their exposure to formal mediation practices perhaps, uh, is there a certain extent to which they're, they're, they're internalizing this logic of mediation as a kind of ethical good, as a way to comport themselves, you know, generally in their relationships? Is that something that that data is showing? Um, so that's my question. And one tiny other little question, which was for Quan. Well, it's not a question, it's just a comment. The community consultation uh, stuff that you talk about and the lack of ethnic diversity within community consultation. That There's is quite a lot written about this in, um, in the Anthropology of International Development, about the, about the practice of com community consultation in international development. And what they really stress is that community consultation is not really about consulting the community. It's about constructing a sense of legitimacy for a plan that's already effectively in action. And I think that helps to explain why you don't have a representative community in their meetings, because fundamentally it's about giving a sense of legitimacy to a project that was already top down, that was already done by the government and would be done by the government in that way. So that, that literature might help you to think through the problem of community, media, uh, community uh, consultation. So that, that's my two questions, and I apologize for my dog. Thanks, Adam. No, don't worry. It's like a, the funny part. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't know if Maria or someone else wants to comment on the remarks from Adam. Maybe it's better yeah. now. Okay. Yes, I can. Well, uh, so thank you, Adam, a lot for your comments. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, First thing, well, I understand not not everything is mediation. Um, sometimes it is collaboration, but some point in the middle that it it's quite um, had some of the features of mediation. For example, with the example I was giving you with the DDPs and Trinitarios at the um, 
at my explanation is that the the persons who are doing this um, oh, this mediation is finding an agreement it's like people who is not active in the group anymore or not not fully inside the group but someone who still has the um, the respect or has an status in the group but is not an, an active member of the group and so he, he he is able to talk to both parts and reach an agreement and reach a, a, some kind of compromise that this group will good for the for the groups but i understand it's not exactly a mediation when i refer to when we refer to natural mediation or to uh, the kind of practices we talk about as we consider that the gang leaders are an example of uh, how good practices can work if we can help leaders to help the group turn in a different way. Um, and this is something to talk about. We have it in the gang uh, that Carlos mentioned it before. Um, for example, I can give you an example of one, um, one gang member that is not active in the gang, but makes an uh, uh, makes the mediator role between an association and one gang member who is in prison and who needs a job and he the, the association is collaborating with this gang but the association leader is angry with the gang because the gang is not answering properly and so he doesn't want to to work with them anymore then this ex-gang member or or, or um, gang member is the one who's mediating between the association and the group with the final objective of continue working together and also so they can help for example the person who's in prison to get a job in the association and that person is making that 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 mediator role um they have internalized the concept is possible i i think it is uh it's, it's a pity that clema has left was here before, and he's one of the of the participants of the core participants in Madrid. And um, they have the example of two associations in Madrid, uh, three associations in Madrid, who uh, sorry, which um, have gang members as what they call um, trabajadores de calle, street workers that. Don't, don't act like gang members inside the institution, but mediate between the gang and the association so that they can work together. I understand it is not exactly and technically what a Paris mediation literature says, but it is the role they do and it is the role that they have internalized. What, what we say mediation is and what we explain mediation is and what the gangs can do or can, how can they participate in mediation experiences? Well, that's my reflection, but no, I don't want to, to stand anymore. Thanks a lot, Maria. And uh, Carmen, you would also like to comment something or you have a question? Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, I would like to share with you one idea I got uh, looking at the Italian panorama landscape in particular in Milan. Uh, these are ideas that I shared also with Paolo. And uh, it is related to the fact that the pandemic, in a way, changed uh, uh, the dynamics of uh, street groups. And uh, it happened in the last uh, few months, I would say, three, four months, uh, that in different places in Italy, uh, in Rome, in nearby Milan, and in Veneto, in the eastern region of Italy, there, uh, there have been the so-called fast fights. Fast fights means mass fighting between young people, interesting intersects, uh, both uh, young boys and young girls, adolescents, uh, who decided to fight with another group. We are talking about uh, mass fights, that is uh, 50 to 70 people 
on each side and they through the social decide to meet and then they they fight some people also uh, has got uh, serious uh, problems through those fights until now nobody was seriously injured but anyway um, all the media talk about these new uh, situations in the streets and i simply uh, would like to uh, share with you the idea that there are new dynamics of depression new dynamics of frustrations new dynamic of uh, uh, so-called social disease which are spreading a new in this uh, pandemic time and so as i believe that uh, we can see things uh, if we look at them if we focus on them so my my wish as regards our research is to uh, look at these new dynamics and see how they how they go on all over uh, our research places <laughs> my my video stopped uh, alone okay did you hear me yes carmen we did hear you fine we just okay didn't hear you, but we did hear you fine <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for your Thank you. reflections and um, I don't know if someone else wants to comment on these reflections or uh, on something else. Yes. Yes, Juan? go ahead. Yes, I, I want just to to share with you some challenge about this this work. And I, I think Adam said the first challenge is uh, the term social mediation. But at the same time, I think this is a, a good opportunity. So I don't think the exercise is only to fit what is social mediation in another disciplines or, or, or before transgang, transgang, but how local field uh, could modify this the, the this meaning of social mediation but it's very difficult this is a big challenge for the project i think and the second challenge is uh, who are doing the field work and i think it's something is missing uh, maybe there are not the time but i think in a moment we need to know who are these local researchers who are which is their background their backgrounds the local researcher was living before I start this work the local researcher speak the language the local researchers comes from doing the work uh, what is the background only this is very important i think because ethnography is a kind of um, uh, like carl is doing it in his in, in in this biography autobiography work with cesar i think this is a kind of uh, i don't know how to say uh, artistic i mean it is not objective there are human beings talking about human beings so if we forget this this kind of the uh, the, the the this there are both uh, two parts so we are only talking about the second part it's very important to talk about the local researcher in another moment this is all this thank you Thank you, Juan. Uh, Carlos, please go ahead. What, what Carmen explained about mass fighting is also a phenomenon that in, that, that in Madrid and Barcelona happened. Uh, Maria and, and Eduard can explain about it. And in my opinion, it's, it's, it reflects this evolution in the last 20 years from the face of uh, gangs as ghosts like that uh, that Luca explained us the first the first step. The second step was the the visibility and the um, the extra visibility of gangs through the two faces gangs crime, crime, criminal gangs on on one side and uh, citizen ga uh, gangs gangs becoming association 
on the other uh, on the other hand and the third uh, phase the third step the present or the last uh, 10 years is a, a, a new phase of in, invisibilization but uh, that, that the pandemic uh, was the, the end because because the disappear, disappear they disappear on the streets but on the other side they use uh, a new kind of subjective visibility in YouTube and in social networks. And I think this is one interesting question to be to be investigated. How this evolution of visibility and invisibility is today uh, the combination of today visibility and invisibility and also these mass fightings that are not of small of between two gangs as the classical fight between um, West Side Story or between uh, Latin kings against Nietas, but is a more massive, is a is an, a spectacle, is a kind of a spectacular uh, urban urban uh, uh, urban uh, conflict. That's all. Hola, Nelly. Puedo hablar? Sí, sí, sí. Edo. Voy a hablar en español porque si no no me saldrá lo que quiero decir ahora, eh, disculpadme y quien no lo entienda, si, si alguien puede ponerlo rápidamente, solo para entrar en el debate de la mediación un momento. ¿no? Me parece que tenemos en mente la mediación de, de, entre bandas o entre grupos, ¿no? como, y respondiendo un poco también a, a tu pregunta, Carles, ¿no? de qué pasa con, los, con las bandas y cómo las entendemos hoy. Yo, por lo menos en Barcelona, en gran medida han desaparecido o han cambiado a otra, a otra cosa. ¿no? Entonces, esta mediación entre grupos en, pierde sentido frente a una nueva, un nuevo tipo de mediación que debe ser, debe ser entre los grupos de jóvenes y con quién sufren esta violencia. Entonces yo por eso ponía lo del tema de la violencia estructural, porque al final, al menos los jóvenes que yo he estudiado por aquí, por, por ejemplo estos chicos que ponía del hospitalet de los bloques, no tienen un problema con otro grupo de, de jóvenes, tienen un problema con la policía, tienen un problema con, con no encontrar trabajo, tienen un problema con con temas de drogas. Entonces, ¿qué mediación hay aquí? ¿no? Y entonces ya casi se pasa de la mediación a, a un trabajo de servicios sociales, de alguna forma, porque claro, ningún gobierno ataca la, la, la violencia estructural ni cambia las dinámicas que existen en estos barrios. ¿no? Por eso yo ponía en esta idea de mediación, que yo entiendo que en Transgang la, la, la recibimos de forma amplia, como cómo como median frente a sus problemas en el día a día o en la vida, ¿no? Tiene que tener en cuenta esta visión estructural, ¿no? Porque su problema principal yo creo que es esto. En muchos casos el problema principal de los grupos que estudiamos son poder tener papeles de ciudadanía. Y esto es una mediación con, con el Estado, ¿no? Casi para... Bueno, solo quería hacer este pequeño apunte. Y lo siento por el español. Thanks a lot, Edua. And Maria is doing a great job. She translated it in the chat, so... Uh, thanks for your your reflection and Adam. I think it would be a good idea for your final comment or question. Go ahead. Sure. sure. Yeah. Just 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 to come back on the point on on mediation. Then uh, I, I'm not I'm not I'm not suggesting that we begin with a, a concept of social mediation or uh, and, and try to work out whether what happens in the field looks like that concept. There, there are lots of different concepts of mediation, but what you can't get away from is that if it's a mediation, it mediates between two or more relations. So they then relate those relations can go between the police and the gang, or one gang and another gang and the police, or so on and so on and so on. But the mediation, the concept itself, implies a third party entering a set of predefined relationships, mediating into it. You know, so, so I'm not saying, and I think, you know, I, I think that there are other ways that the gangs are resolving problems that aren't necessarily requiring a mediator. You know, let's say I fall out with someone, I might resolve that myself with that person because I have a, you know, I don't know, I have a charitable disposition or whatever, but that's not mediation. So I, I, I think that it would do us, it would do us a kind of conceptual service. It would do us good to really think about what is and what isn't mediation. Um, because there are, you know, there are kind of conceptual barriers to the concept of mediation. It necessarily implies an intervention in a relationship between two or more 
persons, actors, institutions by a third party. That 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 that's the that's the concept in its in its kind of core uh, way it's organised. Uh, so I just wanted to clear that point up. It's not really about you know ethnographic concepts of mediation versus theoretical concepts. It, it it's it's about the kind of core technology of that concept. Thanks a lot, Adam. Um, yeah, I think this. Ah, uh, Luca, you want to have uh, the final, <laughs> the final remark? Go ahead. No, no, I have no final <laughs> remark. I don't know. If... Okay, we we are closing. Yes. We just, uh... okay. okay. So yes, that would be perfect. So if you would like uh, to close. No, it's not the final remark. <laughs> it's just to follow <laughs> on the discussion uh, with two points. Uh, the first point is that uh, effectively, uh, as uh, Carmen said, Carles said, uh, uh, the epidemic moment uh, is something that is marking our work as researcher and at the same time uh, has uh, uh, transformed uh, globally the street life. Uh, and I think that we have to take in account it, no? Because uh, we are doing research in that uh, precise uh, historic moment and uh, we cannot uh, do as this, uh, <laughs> this did not exist. And uh, the second uh, point uh, is uh, uh, about what was saying uh, Edward uh, and Adam before. So I remember when uh, in uh, 2010 uh, we were doing mediation with gangs. Uh, it means uh, there was a kind of policies uh, in Genoa uh, from the local authorities uh, and gangs uh, were occupying uh, squat and uh, other uh, kind of uh, uh, buildings. Uh, and we, in this process of social research and uh, action research, we said, no, we are not doing uh, mediation. We just want to reroute the conflict. It means uh, uh, the violence that the gang uh, was uh, protagonizing uh, were, 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 uh, was an internal violence, gangs against gang. Our idea was to reroute these, uh, these claims uh, to other subjects, to other actors in terms of uh, citizenship. Uh, so I, 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 the, the idea is that uh, maybe something uh, that go in that direction uh, we can see now. I just uh, think about uh, Black Lives Matter. I don't know what happens with Black Lives Matter in Spain, uh, in France, uh, but in Italy it was uh, a transformation in a hybrid style of some kind of uh, youth street grouping with uh, migrant origin. And it was a moment that uh, politicized uh, this kind of uh, of claim and this kind of uh, uh, violence uh, uh, between a group. So I think that uh, maybe we can try to address uh, this uh, kaleidospo kaleidoscopic field uh, of youth street gang uh, rethinking you know, the idea of uh, mediation uh, and looking to embryonal form of politicization of claims. So this was just... Uh, Thank you so much, Luca. And I think now it's like five past six. I think it's a good time to close this, this seminar and our reflection. So thanks all of you. Um, I will share my video if it's possible. Um, so thanks all of you for your presentations and for participating here in the seminar. And we are happy to see you again in the mid of February and uh, just we will let you know uh, by, via email and uh, social media, etc. So we're happy to share the next seminar again with you. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I don't know if Carlos, if you want to say something else. Amigo, Carlos. I, I invite you to, to to take off uh, to, to take on the video and make uh, a photograph take a, take a photograph from for remembering this moment and also thank to thank all the participants from from the four not only the four European countries but from Morocco Algeria uh, Colombia and um, and El Salvador and I, we, I think we are advancing in our in our project
Eh, 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 malgré eh, a pesar de pandemics. So take on the photo and if it's possible to to share. Oh, it's not possible because. Carlos, no se puede ver la pantalla completa. Oh, oh, oh okay. No cabe, no I was thinking about Zoom. In Zoom is sí. possible. In collaborate is not possible. So sorry, no. sorry, ma, my. Uh, thank you, Luca, Carmen, Eduard, and Maria, and Anelle, of course, and, and and Juan. And the next the next me the next meeting will be on about Latin America. I think it's in 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 March, isn't it? In March. Anelle? Yes, and uh, the next one in theory is uh, with Margot on audiovisual um, oh, anthropology okay. and all the documentary uh, transgang projects. So, but we will let you know. Um, the, the exact uh, details. So thanks a lot to okay. all of you. Have a good afternoon. Have a nice weekend.